gap in the Indian economy is a market failure. Now, credit gap aside, there's a credit gap in the microfinance sector as well. One may ask that this is a sector that defaults the least. It generates about 26% yield. 26% yield, 2% NPA, there is no reason you should not be invested in this sector. India has about uh, 9500 NBFCs of which less than 400 are more than a thousand crores and it is these uh, and less than 60 are rated A and above. Now most of the capital markets uh, funding or even bank funding goes to these A rated agencies, uh, A rated NBFCs who further lend on to a smaller NBFC, who might further lend it onwards to another smaller NBFC and eventually to a borrower. So there's a lot of capital bulk breaking that's happening and at every point this capital bulk breaking takes away between 4 to 7% spread. Our entire thesis sort of understanding the sector was that the value of this bulk breaking is not worth you know 30% of what the borrower pays. We can use technology to you know do this uh, disintermediate this these capital distributors or bulk breakers kind of do a more D2C type model and um, allow investors to earn a higher return, kind of unlock more capital and also give benefit to borrowers on the other. Say your money, so if, if, let's say you lend as little as 5,000 rupees, which is uh, which ideally should be more because it's a debt investment product. Um, your money will go to between 8 to 10 borrowers, fractions of loans of 8 to 10 borrowers. And these borrowers will come from different uh, income sources, different geographies, thereabouts. So the system will diversify. We just have to continually keep getting better at this diversification. Oh, 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 oh,